So we've established that there are four major biomechanisms, which is the power source, the sound source, the resonating system, and your articulating system. So those shape your sounds from the scientific point of view. So we now progress into interpreting the sounds. Are they making sense? Mind you, music has to be pleasing to the ear. It has to be a combination of sounds, melodies, that the ear, the human ear can interpret and then vocalize. So that's where oral clarity, oral, I repeat, oral, A-U-R-A-L, or what we call ear tuning. Some people call it ear training. But I prefer to use the term tuning because it's like you're reprogramming how your brain interprets sounds in various frequencies. So every sound vibrates at a certain frequency. You need to understand when you're singing something low, when you're singing something moderate in pitch and high. So how do you tune to music? How do you tune to sounds as a singer? It's almost like a tuning system for... How many of you guys know these radio devices? So when you're tuning to attain a particular frequency, you see the sound is noisy and then it's a bit distorted. But once you've gotten that frequency, there's consonants. So when you don't tune properly to your vocal instrument, you don't tune to musical instruments, the piano, when you hear a key and then you're producing something different, it shows that your tuning is not aligned to pitch. So how do you tune to pitch? You hear you internalize. There are three processes. You hear, you internalize, then you vocalize or you sing what you heard. So the process of being perfect to an extent where you're able to hear sounds and then you interpret them with your ear exactly how you heard them and then you can be able to interpret sound in their specific range or octave or pitch. That process is referred to as relative pitch so your sense of relativity and your sense of relative pitch is sharp because you can hear a particular sound and then you match it in pitch and probably in range also so for example if i do something like c then i go to c sharp d this is d sharp now but i don't i should not depend on the instrument to guide me as I transcend and pitch. C, C sharp, D, D sharp. You see, I tuned to the key without playing it on the piano. E, F, see, I'm playing F, F sharp, G, G sharp. You see, I'm tuning, I'm matching everything that's been played on the piano on pitch. So that's the basic process of ear training or ear tuning. So I have a couple of exercises that um, I have down for us to practice on. And first of all, it's very important as a singer, you understand tone to tone movement and tone to semitone movement. That's what we call interval distances in music. And then the basic way we interpret intervals is using the major scale. A lot of people are familiar with that which is the root to octave the major scale can be interpreted with sulfur notes numbering so we're going to be focusing more on the numbering system and the solfage so how it works is simple do re mi fa sol la ti do let's do that together Fa sol la ti do. We breathe in. Do do re re mi mi fa fa fi fi. That's a minor interval. I'll speak on that as we go on. Sol sol la. So we'll do them with numbers now. We are substituting Do for one. Re is second interval. Mi is third interval or interval three. 
Fa is interval four. So is five. La is six. Ti is seven. And then Do, which is the octave, is eight. So the octave is your eighth interval from your root. It's like you're doing the root in a higher pitch. So let's do the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in. Out. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. So the benefit of using numbering and solfage is you're training your brain to process notes, notation, tones with different systems. You see some people, when you're using numbers for them, they struggle. But when you go, come back to solfage, they do it okay well because they are used to solfage. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So when you process sounds with different characters, it has a way of sticking so that you own the sound. You don't just do it because you remember it's do, re, mi, fa, boy. You know how do sounds on a particular key. You know how re, mi, fa, you know all the intervals internally whether it's true numbers. So these exercises, you practice them every day, like one, two, three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, three, two, one. Two, three, four, three, two. Two, three, four, three, two. Sustain the notes. Two, three, four, three, two. Two, three, four, three, two. Three, four, five, four, three. Three, four, five, four, three. Four, five, six, five, four. Say. Four, five, six, five, four. One, five, seven, five, one. One, five, seven, five, one. Do, so, ti, so, do. Do, so, ti, so, do. One, five, seven, five, one. One, five, seven, five, one. Good, that's excellent. So, understanding the movements between interval, tone to tone, tone to semitone, is what makes your sense of hearing. It improves it. Like I always tell singers, if you want to develop your sense of connecting to pitch you practice the chromatic skill the chromatic skill has tone to semitone intervals all throughout in between one root and a higher root or a higher um, version of the root so you hit all the semitones in between it's like do d on solfage is do d re re mi fa fi so si la li and when you're descending, still on the chromatic scale or chromatic interval, rather, do, ti, li, la, si, so, fi, fa, mi, ri, re, di, do. So I believe some of you will be asking. What's the benefit of this exercise? It helps you to know when you're going off pitch. Because you sing every tone or every interval in the chromatic scale as a key. You take each of them as an independent key on. So that way, you make sure your sound is hollowed. Your sound is balanced and also your tone is um, firm. Let me use the word firm on each pitch. Because some people, when they are drifting and they are going from tone to semitone, hitting the minor intervals, their pitch starts to, then it's shaky and then they are not hitting the right pitch. So you want to make sure you hit the right interval at the right um, time. So, do, di, do. Let's go together. Do, di, do. 
do re mi re do do re mi re do one three five three one sustain the one one three five three one sustain the one one three five three one let's go one three five three one one three five three use your breathing support let's go one three five three one that's good okay so um let's try out tone to semitone interval there's a hack i give most singers that I work with, which is T, T, Do. So when you're going from tone to semitone, you don't have to start thinking, oh, am I going, am I hitting the right pitch? So if you're familiar with Do, Do, T, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do, Do, T, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. So you just think of the next key as a Do and your current key as T. So you substitute your Do, Do for T, T going to the next Do, T, Do. So what I'll give you now is how to go from tone to semitone, which is this is your tone, it becomes T. Do T La so fa mi re do there you do T Do T La so fa mi re do T Do then you know T Do becomes T Do becomes T T Do T La so fa mi re do Let's go T Do breathe in Si do ti la so fa mi re do. Slowly, let's go again. Si do ti la so fa mi re do. Si do. Let's go. Si do ti la so fa mi re do. And your do becomes ti now to the next. Si. Si do ti la so fa mi re do. Yeah, make sure you make every pitch clear and accurate let's go breathe in that's good breathe in so we'll use um, a hack I give for modulation, which is part of what trains you as a singer to connect from one key to another key, from one interval to either a semitone, which is just directly on top of the pitch that you're currently in. That's why I say this T, do is half step movement. Full step is O, Do, Re, that's Do, Re, Do, that's full step movement. But in between Do and Re, there's D, that's half step. So Do to D is half step interval skip or movement so that's tone to semitone tone to semitone or t do t do let's go t do let's go t do so um amazing god we use this song it's a popular song amazing god you do mind blowing things amazing god you do mind blowing things amazing god they know t do amazing god good amazing god you do mind Blowing things slowly. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, let's do the basic one. Yeah, amazing. 
Good. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, Tito. Amazing God, amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God. So I will do the amazing. So that's another linkage. When you're linking the key, your parent's key or your root key to the next destination key, you can do something like amazing, amazing, amazing. That's how it works. So amazing. So doti, 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 doti. Then you know, go oh, amazing God, amazing God, you do mind blowing things, amazing. Do, ti, do. Simple. So let's go from tone to tone, which is full tone. That one, um, you can do um, stuff like you do mind blowing things, amazing God, do re, amazing. That's it. So let's go back to the former key so that we we'll test run it and then everybody can just see how it works basically. You do mind blowing things. Slowly. Amazing God. You do mind blowing things. Amazing God. Do Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, you do mind blowing things. Amazing God, do re. Amazing God. Good, so you see. She was able to go to the next key without the guide of the instrument. So that shows her adjustment to the tuning in terms of tone to tone. It's improving in that regard. So that's what we're talking about. You knowing how to go from tone to tone, tone to semitone when you're singing without any discrepancies in terms of your accuracy in pitch. And so these are some of the exercises we do. And then you can pick a song like How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God And all will sing how great How great is our God Oh, great is our God Let me continue Sing with me how great is our God and all will sing how great how great is our God oh yeah is our God sing with me how great is our God oh will sing how great is our God. So that's how it works. 
is our God. So going tone to tone, is, sing with me how great, how great is our God. Whoa. Is our God sing with me? How great is our God? Oh, we'll sing how great, how great is our God. So that's how tone to tone works in practical when you're using it in a, on a song. Still on ear tuning. It's very important you know how to tune to match pitch. I've been saying that, I've been repeating that, and it's, it just gives you a sense of control over pitch. And then you now know how to, when you've established that control over pitch, you now take it on to range, range coordination and range mastery. For example, if I want to find my range, my range should be the spectrum of notes I can comfortably hit from the lowest pitch in my vocal measurement or vocal compass, what I call your voice compass, to the highest. Then when you've established this, by training your ear repeatedly with some of these exercises I've already given, you now know okay, how to balance between low, mid, and high. You don't just jump into the high notes. So I see some people, they want to go high and they say, Your presence is heaven. You see? But if you understand tuning and you understand your, the balancing of your range, you know you're supposed to, Your, your, your presence. You see how I was able to blend into that range? I didn't just start like shouting. That will make it shouty and pitchy. So ear training also affects how you coordinate your notes. Let's just touch some of the numbering exercise. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight. Eight, seven, eight, six, eight, five, eight, four, eight, three, eight, two, eight, one. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. Five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, eight, seven, eight, six, eight, five, eight, four, eight, three, eight, two, eight, one. Still on um, the ear tuning exercises, or do this one is on sofa notation or sofa sofage rather. So fa so mi re do. So let's try it out. So fa so mi re do. So fa so mi re do. Let's demodulate. Now demodulating is going back to your modulating but downwards in the lower pitch. So fa so mi re do. So fa so mi re do. So fa so mi re do. So so fa so mi re do 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 so fa Ascending, descending, and then I'm just hitting the intervals. So you train yourself, your ear begins to register, okay, how this movement works and how each of the transitions work. So, so, fa, so, mi, re, do. After me, go, say. So, fa, so, mi, re, do. So, fa, so, mi, re, do. So, We'll go on to the articulation exercises. We understand now that articulation has to do with how you communicate the sound and words. Okay, how you shape the sound using, in this context, Northern American English. So, 
I'll be giving you certain exercises to just help you with clarity in your communication so that you are able to understand, okay, the consonant flow, the vowel flow, deep thongs, and then how you also vary your vowels. I call it vowel variation or delayed phrasing, and then there's also vowel modification. So these are some of the concepts um, regarding articulation that we'll be touching.